Johnny Depp has a catalog of films unlike any other actor. With nearly 40 years of acting under his belt, Depp still chooses unique characters to play. He's different among the other Hollywood elites because of these choices and because he doesn't take his fame too seriously. You can tell he has fun with his characters. Depp is in a league of his own. I respect his talent to play serious characters like George Young, Donnie Brasco, and Woody Bulger, only to create a purely special character like the eccentric Captain Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Depp has an acting range that most other actors can't touch, and I enjoy that he doesn't stray from choosing edgy stories that other actors of his caliber would stay away from, like 2001's From Hell, a brutal horror movie that tells the story of Inspector Frederick Aveline's dangerous quest to solve the Jack the Ripper crimes. In this video, I'll discuss Abilene's character, focusing on his personal life, specifically the unfortunate loss of his wife and child, his visions during his drug use, and how his suicide allows for his wife and child to live on. I have wonderful news. Tell me. Dr. Marbury says I'm going to have your child. Among all the bloodshed and gothic atmosphere in the film, there's a tale of love and tragedy. The Abilene that we see for the first bulk of the movie is drenched in drugs and visions of butchered prostitutes. Even though his extracurricular activities involve opium dens and homemade concoctions of the opiate itself, there isn't any doubt to his skill as a detective. In fact, when we're first introduced to his character, after the first 10 minutes that highlights the eventual slain prostitutes, in their aggressive pimps, we see Abilene zooted out of his mind in an Asian opium parlor, only to be woken up and brought back to work. It. Ah. Hello, Johnny. People with addictions to hard drugs, such as opiates, are sometimes more than just enjoying the drug for recreational use. Most times, it's because a tragic situation has occurred and their drug use is their way to find a peaceful way out of reality. Such is the case for Abilene. During a scene where he drinks a mixture of absinthe and laudanum, he has a dream about his wife informing him of her pregnancy. It's a sweet scene in the middle of a gory film that quickly adds to the backstory of Abilene. We know now that Abilene was in love and was to be a father. Abilene never has a memory of his wife while he's sober. The film only shows her for a brief moment while he's under the influence of opium. This implies that his drug use is connected to his wife and is used to remember the good times with her. Abilene is living a life filled with loneliness and suffering. His hopes and dreams of being a family man have been taken from him. All he has now is his work in a fatal drug habit, which is not by accident. He's lost all hope and likely figures that developing a drug habit that will eventually kill him is the only amount of happiness he'll have while alive. When asked by Mary Kelly if he has children, Abilene tells her of his dead wife and child. Do you have little ones, Inspector? No. My wife, um, passed away. Giving birth to what I'm told was the son. Mary Kelly, a seasoned prostitute, becomes his love interest in the film. He takes her to the art gallery and later kisses her. Despite her profession, Abilene does not judge her. He's not afraid to be seen in public with her something Mary Kelly even questions. I want to show you some paintings on the way out, yeah? You can take me into the gallery. Why not? It's never mentioned if Abilene's wife was a prostitute, but there is a deleted scene where she entices him down a dark alley, similar to how the Whitechapel prostitutes engage in their ways. This may be true as Abilene shows immediate interest in Mary Kelly when she flirts with him during their first meeting. So perhaps Abilene, just like Prince Albert, has a taste for unfortunate women. In a way, Abilene and Prince Albert's characters somewhat parallel one another. They both familiarize themselves with prostitutes, and they both have wives and children taken from them. Even though Mary Kelly is a prostitute, the film elevates her character above displaying her in a sexual manner, and instead portrays her as a logical thinking woman of respect. McQueen is mad. He enjoys hurting women, that's why. Oh, I see. Women are butchered right and left in your district. And you can't do piss about it. And I'm the fool. You think that's funny? Unfortunate like me being a decent mother. Do you think I'm paying you back? 
I didn't mean it as business. I'm still a woman. They haven't taken that away from me, not yet anyways. I'll help you with baby Alice, but not yet. Gotta trust me, man. At least a little bit. I do. I do trust you. In fact, she's assumed to be a replacement for Aveline's wife at one point. When he speaks of baby Alice at the orphanage, he mentions that we'll get her later, implying that he and Mary Kelly will both assume responsibility for the child. She even notes this. What about baby Alice? Are you sure she's all right? Yeah, she's all right. We'll get her out after this is over. We'll get her. Mary Kelly tells him of her small village where she grew up, implying that when the Ripper case is over, they'll possibly start a new life together. I wish I could show you the little village where I was born. It's by the sea, the way you said you saw me. I used to think it too small to spend a life in, but now I'm not so sure. Laudanum is a derivative of opium. Apart from doctors and addicts, not many will recognize it. How long have you chased the dragon? Abeline has several instances where he has visions from using opiates that give him clues to the crimes. During these dreams, we see moments of these murders that do eventually happen. The only time he has a dream of his wife is when he uses drugs in the bathtub at home. The safety and privacy of his home, likely where his wife had lived with him, brings memories of her when using drugs. Otherwise, when he's smoking an opium at the parlor, he sees visions of the crimes. This difference in dreams about his wife and his dreams about the murders implies that Abilene recognizes that the change in setting will bring these different dreams. The first time we see Abilene, other than the opening credits, he's at the opium den, knowing that he will see visions of upcoming murders. And when speaking with his boss, he even mentions to Abilene that he's heard that Abilene dreams of the clues that help him solve the crimes. Inspector, I know your reputation for making brilliant guesses that turn out to be right. Someone told me you claim to dream the answers. But that isn't what we see in the movie. Yes, Abilene dreams of the crimes, but they don't help him solve anything. The dreams show him clues, but he doesn't stop a crime from happening. So these visions are nothing more than a form of additional torture that plagues him with brutal moments of recent murder victims. He's his own worst enemy at this point. His dreams only allow for clues for the audience to put together. He uses drugs to relieve himself of the pain of his dead wife and child, but his drug use gives him nightmarish visions that don't solve any crimes. He's a lost soul who suffers from the death of his wife and child, and he further inflicts added pain onto himself by using opiates that will eventually kill him. Besides the dream of his wife telling him of her pregnancy, the only other positive vision he has is just before his own death. Ironically, his last dream is in the opium parlor, where he's had nothing but the brutal dreams of the murdered prostitutes. This time, though, he sees a happy Mary Kelly living with Alice in a small house by the ocean, just like she mentioned to him. The vision implies that Mary Kelly and Alice successfully live in Ireland, without any threats to their safety because Alice is a few years older now. The dreams in the opium parlor had been specifically delegated to the Ripper killings, but since it's his final time using drugs, it's as if fate granted him one last good dream to let him know Mary Kelly and Alice were both going to be alright. I never fully understood that tradition. For the ferryman. Very many who takes the body across the river into the land of the dead. If she don't have the money to pay him, she'd have to wander forever lost between the two worlds. On the surface, From Hell is a tragic tale of a good man who lost his family and turned to drugs. As badly as he tried, Abilene didn't stop the Ripper crimes either, but rather solved why they were happening. The knowledge of why is perhaps even worse than the crimes themselves because it involves the legacy of the British Empire. If Abilene continued his profession as a detective, he would likely never have been able to view the integrity of his profession as honorable. No, Abilene's only option was to die. If he were to go to Mary Kelly and begin a new life with her, they would have been looking over their shoulders forever. As tragic as it is, Abilene likely had no problem with dying. 
He had already lost his wife and child and was using high drugs that he knew would eventually kill him anyway. Plus, he implied he wanted to start a new family with Mary Kelly, but with her faking her death to save herself and rescue baby Alice, there wasn't any hope for him. Abilene's death is his way of giving Mary Kelly the gift of having a child that his wife had wanted. Although he won't be there to see them, he dies knowing that he was able to honor what he and his wife wanted. His mission was completed, the Ripper case ended, and his desire to have a family was accomplished. He sacrifices his life to make sure Mary Kelly and Alice, and by extension his wife and unborn child, live on. The final scene of Sergeant Godley trying to wake Abilene up in the opium den echoes back to the beginning of the film, only this time, Godley discovers that Abilene chose to overdose because there wasn't any future worth living for him anymore. The two coins in Abilene's hand prove his suicide, hoping that whoever finds him will give him the respect of placing the coins over his eyes to give to the ferryman. Good night, sweet prince. From Hell is one of my favorite Johnny Depp films, and stories about tragic heroes are my favorite types of movies. There's a certain catharsis we get out of experiencing tragic stories. When you follow the hero for his entire journey, hoping that he'll achieve his goal, only to watch him fall, really hits home. I think all of us experience that defeat from time to time. Life is filled with disappointments, setbacks, and struggles. Facing these setbacks and then rising from them makes us who we are. And stories about tragic heroes let us know we're not alone in our struggles, and that others experience these difficult obstacles too. Stories about tragic heroes teach us that we should never give up hope, regardless of how difficult the situation.